every night when my father came home from work, he'd take out the math book and he'd sit me at the dinner table and he'd ask me, what's two plus two? I'd look at him and I'd say five. He'd scratch his head, he'd ask me again, what's two plus two? I'd giggle and then I'd say five. By the time I was 13, I was literally allergic to algebra. We are in the midst of a true economic crisis. And while we hear proposals that are helpful on the margin, a tax credit here, a loan program there, we have to radically change our economy. Let's talk about how we got here. In the 1990s, we added 23 million new jobs. Globalization was ramping up. China joined the WTO. And US workers, we were the most productive in the world. And then in the 2000s, we started to consume, consume, and consume. And then 2008 happened, the economic crisis. We lost 8 million manufacturing jobs, and 14 million people became unemployed. This was a once-in-a-generation economic crisis. And now we're left trying to figure out, how do we reignite our economy? Well, a recent study by McKinsey said that we have to add 21 million new jobs by 2020. And that's not, that should not only employ existing Americans, but to employ our growing workforce. So America, we're at a choice moment right now. We can choose the direction we want our economy to take. We can choose the industries we want to build. And we can choose the skills we want our workers to have. India was similarly at a choice moment before in 1947. It didn't become a nation of doctors and engineers overnight and it didn't become a nation of doctors and engineers by chance. In 1947, partition happened, and Nehru became the first prime minister of India. And he realized India didn't create anything. Even its razor blades were imported from England. So he also realized that in order to create industry, he needed engineers. So he set out on foot, and he'd go from village to village, community to community, and he'd gather all these little boys, and he'd talk to them about the importance of technical skills. Well, one little girl, Damnati Gupta, she snuck into Nehru's talk, and she heard him say two words, engineer and Ford Motor Company. At that time, India didn't have any female engineers, but she became the first female engineer in her village and the first female engineer at Ford Motor Company here in America. We need to do the same thing. We need to set out by foot, community by community, school to school, and empower an entire generation boys and girls to go into technical careers. Right now, we have to increase STEM degrees. Our universities give out twice as many degrees in business and social science as they do in STEM. That needs to, be, that needs to change. Secondly, women have to be included in this economic recovery. They are the key to our economic success. Right now, 58% of all bachelor's degrees, 58% are given to women. However, only 18% of all computer science degrees are given to women in 2008. That number used to be 37% in 1985. What's happening? Well, in fourth grade, boys and girls like math and science pretty much the same. But then something happens. And by eighth grade, twice as many boys are electing to go into STEM careers. What's going on? Well, Fermilab provides a little bit of insight. Fermilab is a laboratory out in Illinois and they do these tours of their lab, and they gather these seventh graders. And before they take the tour, they ask them to draw a picture of what they think a scientist looks like. Well, these kids have never had any exposure to a scientist, so they draw a white, nerdy-looking guy. And then they take a tour, and they meet men, and they meet women, and they're asked to draw a picture after the tour. Well, guess what? They draw a woman. Just imagine what we could do if we can replicate Fermilab all across this country and use other programs to teach girls that, yes, they can love math and science, too. Popular culture, it's not helping. T-shirts like these, that they're allergic to algebra, and the Barbie who says math is tough, is enhancing and creating that perception that math and science are not for them. I did a quick Google search. Girls who hate math, boys who hate math. The results, they're astonishing. We have to change this. We also have to see that the fact that girls and women are not going into STEM, it's not a problem, but it's an opportunity that we have to flip on its head. And that's exactly what I'm doing at the Fund for Public Advocacy. In the summer of 2012, we are launching a summer program called Girls Who Code. And we're going out there 
foot by foot and recruiting young girls from disadvantaged communities, sophomores in high school, and we're going to teach them how to code. We're going to teach them HTML, Ruby on Rails, and JavaScript. And we're going to team them up with female entrepreneurs in New York City and coders because mentorship, mentorship is the key to getting more girls excited about math and science. They have to touch, feel, feel and see women who look like them so they can actually believe that they can. You know, we talk a lot about gender parity in this country, but when I'm sitting here in front of you encouraging young girls to go into STEM, it's not because of gender parity. It's because our economy, it absolutely depends on it. You know, Bill Clinton recently said in this quote, which I love, he said that if he could, he would buy shares in the future of women and girls, and I absolutely agree with him. I want you to look at this collage. Sheryl Sandberg, Marissa Mayer, Alexis Maybank, Indra Nui, Rochelle Parham, this is the future of our country, and we have to replicate this. So I have a homework assignment for all of you. I want you to close your eyes and imagine. Are you doing it? I want you to think of a girl in your life. It could be your daughter, it could be your niece, it could be the little girl next door. Are you thinking of her? When you see her, I want you to do her timetables with her. I want you to have high expectations for her. I want you to inspire her to go into math and science. And I want you to teach her that yes, she can be a girl who codes. Thank you.